Hi, I'm the Fox one and today I'm talking about one-on-one -on -one meetings and what's in it for them. So uh, this is kind of coming from the approach that you are the one hosting the one-on-one -on -one meeting and that you want to know what's in it for them because you want to know why they're invested in this meeting and why they why they should be there um, spending their time with you, right? I talked in another video, what's in it for you? Uh, and because you want to get bought in and get excited about it and you want them to be excited about it. And so just as important, or if not more, what's in it for them? So the first thing that I think is very important is that, and it's the same one uh, as the other video, it stay in the loop. Your employee gets to stay in the loop. Sometimes for them, having that inside track or having that conversation with you, they glean a little bit of knowledge and they do say knowledge is power. And so it is very important for them to be in the loop of what's going on, maybe higher up the chain and behind the scenes of the company. You know, there's lots of different things that could be happening at a higher level that, you know, they might hear second, third, fourth hand information, but they get to hear it right from the source. And so there's a piece of that information that is really powerful and makes them feel really valued. The second one would be you're creating a space for them to share their experience with you. So they are sharing their experience in that environment with you. You know they say that perception is reality. So you're learning what their perception is of the work environment, of the tasks that they have to do. You're learning what their world looks like from their perspective. And through their experiences, it's going to give you a really great insight into what they value, what they're struggling with, what they find is important. So that is also a really amazing tool that they get to bring by sharing their experiences. It is a window into their perception of the environment. The third thing is it's really great practice for them to host a meeting because they're getting the floor for the first 15 minutes or so they get a chance to really find their voice and to find their flow without getting stopped or interrupted or questions asked and because when you ask a question or you start probing into you know something that they might have said it kind of leads the conversation and by giving them the floor for that 15 minutes of uninterrupted ability to share whatever they want to share, it really opens up the door to see what they're going to bring and what they're going to tell you. It lets them practice talking in front of somebody and it lets them really get into the flow of what it's like to host a meeting and to bring up various points in the meeting. The fourth thing is that they feel important, right? They feel valued as an employee. They feel valued as a human. You're carving out time for them and they're also carving out time for you, don't forget. So that is a really great spot for them to have that space and just have your undivided attention so they feel important in the role that they're doing. Their job matters. What they're working on matters. Who they are as people matter. And that is going to build their self-esteem. It's going to help with retention because you're hoping that when they go and mirror that with their employees or their subordinates, it's also going to give, it's going to trickle down the line so that everybody in that environment has that moment where they do get to say their piece and it is important to them. It's important to the leaders. It's important to everybody involved that everybody has a voice and that they are all heard. And last but not least, number five, they don't have to chase you down. How many times have they reached out, maybe sent you an email, sent you a text, hey, are you busy? Hey, am I bugging you? Are you working today? Right? And my answer is always, I'm always working. It's okay. You're not bothering me. I love work. <laughs> you know, share your experience. But but that tells you that either they're chasing you down, right? They don't have time carved out where they feel like they have the space maybe to share what they need to share and or bring up any questions or they're not really sure how to broach it. So usually what happens is they will kind of save up everything that they want to talk to you about. And hopefully when you do sit down and have your one-on-ones once a week, once every other week, however, whatever you decide the cadence is, they will save up those questions and those, that, those pieces of feedback for your meetings. So they use that time wisely and will save it up. So they're not trying to bother you here and there. And it's, you know, a, a bit of a sporadic uh, mess. So anyway, so I hope you found that helpful. Uh, those are just five reasons what's in it for them because uh, both sides are important. It's a relationship, which means that there's give and take and that both sides need to feel value. And so if you don't feel value going into those meetings and 
doing them and getting something out of it, which is going to be moving the business forward, making sure your team is happy, making sure you're staying in the loop and they're not getting something out of it, which also is feeling important, being heard, staying in the loop, then, then what's the point of doing them, right? Then it's just another meeting with no value. I do think that uh, it's good to understand both sides of it. And thanks very much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.